Hi everyone, Guido here with DrDuino.com and today I want to show you something uh, that I'm building using the DrDuino Explorer series and what I'm using this for in this application is for the model railroad enthusiast and this next thing here is I'm, I'm basically tying the buttons of the Explorer so we've got actually four, four buttons up here which are dedicated um, for a switch operation and the LED stick here. These are the address, typical addressable 50-50 LEDs. And so I map them to do some pretty cool lighting effects for your model rail. The first one being kind of your standard railroad crossing signal signaling. Um, the second one is this kind of whitish uh, flickering and this is, you know, useful if you wanted to light up a certain portion of your model rail, uh, like a, a building or something like that. Maybe you want to simulate a television being on or something in the window. But this one, I think, is probably the cooler one. And what you see here is the LED flickering. It's kind of this orange color, and we'll put a piece of paper on it. That way you can see it a bit better. And uh, you, you'll notice that it's actually flickering in this kind of random pattern. And I did that specifically because if it's a, you know, if you're trying to simulate a fire pit or a fireplace or even maybe maybe you have a brick oven or something in, in your model rail layout, uh, you want this to be kind of a random, kind of a random flickering. And it was really pretty easy to do. So let's take a quick look at the code and just to see how this was done. So here you what you see in, in this sketch here is just a switch case which is looking for the uh, the button presses so uh, the like I said the Explorer has four buttons on it and all we're doing is making a call and seeing if, if the user is actually pressing a button uh, if they are it falls into one of the three cases that I set up the first one is the uh, railroad crossing which uh, pretty simple um, we're, again, we're doing this with the addressable LEDs, so all you have to do is set every other, or sorry, set the first four LEDs to red and then the second four LEDs to red. And you do that by setting this value to 255, and this is written in, in R, G, and B. So red is being set to 255, green and blue are being set to zero, so this forces just the just the red to come on. Uh, the fluttering of the white, uh, basically we are just toggling every other LED uh, and we're making it, uh, each one of the R, G, and B, we're going to make that, uh, we're going to set it to a value so that that way it actually creates white. Um, so if you set, for example, 255 for red, 255 for green, and 255 for blue, you will get this bright white. Now, you don't really want to do that with these 50-50 LEDs. Uh, well, at least not to the full brightness. You will burn them out because there's a lot of uh, heat that gets dissipated when they're running that hot and with that much intensity. But, you know, if you do it lower, you know, say maybe around 50 each. So R, G, and B being 50, 50 for red 50 for green and 50 for blue it's generally okay and as long as you don't keep it on too long and all we're doing in here is um, turning on every other light waiting 25 milliseconds and then s turning off the ones that were on and turning on the ones that were off now this is the the fire burning case and this is the cool one so for this one, you'll notice that we are doing this toggle flash pattern. And so initially we come in and we say, if, if the toggle flash pattern is equal to one, we come in and, we, and all we're messing with is the first LED inside of that 50-50 addressable LED stick. And we are turning on actually a red, some, some amount of red and some amount of green. And that actually gives you that orange color. And up in the... Uh, declarations, I, I set these to be 255 and um, I believe 20. And that gives you that nice orange color. So the cool thing here though is I still have the delay, much like what you saw here for the white, except in this event I'm using a call to random, which is actually built into the IDE itself. Um, it knows what random means, it, and we are setting that to be a fixed number. So in this case I set the flicker random delay uh, to a maximum of 50, which means a maximum of 50 seconds, right? So we come in here, we turn on the uh, the orange LED, 
and then we wait a random number of, of time up to 50 milliseconds. The next time we come through here, um, well, actually, sorry, after we hit the, this line here, 170, line 170, we then pop out and we're just turning off the other LEDs uh, just in case they were on for whatever reason. You don't really need to do that. Um, and then we toggle the flash pattern state so that that way the next time we don't fall into this case, we fall into this case here. And in this one, we're doing the same exact thing, except we're turning the lights totally off. And we're again using the random uh, number to give the off time uh, and making that also random. So your on time is random and your off time is random. And that gives you a really nice kind of flickering effect. And it's really pretty simple. So that's it. Pretty awesome, right? Well, that's it. I hope you found that little tidbit of information useful. Uh, if you're interested in the code, head on over to my site and check out the blog posts for this project. Uh, you can also sign up to get notified when the Model Railroad Edition will be live. It will be exclusively for the, uh, the Explorer Edition. Well, that's it. Talk soon.